Alright, so I'm here to talk about the Iron Man 3 spoiler talk, and uh, link to this video, I'll explain why I have very little hair. Let's move on. So Iron Man 3 spoiler review, yeah I gave it an A minus, we already know all this. Let's talk about some things I may have liked or kind of didn't like or a little on the edge about. Let's talk about all the spoiler stuff. So it starts off in the 90s and, well actually like 1999, they make some Y2K jokes. Uh, Favreau's dressed like John Travolta in Pulp Fiction. I, I kind of like it, although I did hate Guy Pearce's uh, like performance right there. Terrible, okay? I don't know if it was the writing or just the way they decided to make him look for the movie, but it was terrible. It's just like greasy, disgusting hair. He's like all gibbled and like effed up teeth. He's just screaming weirdo and then he gets all offended when like Tony Stark kind of blows him off like, I'm just going to ignore you and not talk to you. And so that creates the villain later. <sighs> Pretty obvious, he even says, I created my own demons or whatever. And you also got Rebecca Hall showing up for that scene. And, yeah, I don't think I talked about her much in the original review. But she was so wasted. She, like, three scenes only in this movie. She shows up right here. Shows up a little later. And at the I think she's a good actress. The town, she was pretty good. I like her enough. And she just felt kind of wasted for this whole movie. And where her character goes, becoming, like, the villain that works with Guy... I was going to say Guy Ritchie. Yeah, the guy that made Snatch. She teamed up with him. But yeah, Guy Pierce, they kind of team up for the extremist thing. The motivations were kind of lame. I mean, Guy Pierce, yeah, he, he seems a little bit off. But she just seems like, oh, he slept with me like 500 other women and then never talked to him again. So I hate him and want to team up with this weirdo. What? The Mandarin, you'll never see me coming. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. That I mean, That's the main thing I want to talk about, but I'm just trying to think what else is there to talk about before that. I like the whole panic attacks Downey is feeling during the movie where he just, the Avengers screwed him up. He was in a wormhole and died and then woke up and he was alive because the Hulk saved him. It, it kind of messed with you. You're in a wormhole about to die from a nuclear explosion. You wake up, you're alive. Wait, what? A little bit of PTS going on. And I, I like those scenes. I thought they were interesting. Uh, I kind of wish they'd said a little bit more about maybe where the Avengers were. Reference it more than just saying, New York, New York, what happened in the wormhole? What what was going on in New York? Why, why didn't one person just say, hey, what happened to the guy with the hammer or something? And then maybe he knew. Like the Hulk, at the end you get the scene where he's um, down, he's been narrating the whole movie to him, and he's kind of just falling asleep and stuff. He's like, huh? So... Where was he during this whole movie, I wonder? They couldn't have a drop line like, oh, Captain America. Because, I mean, there's a part, the president's taken hostage by Guy Pearce and he's strapped up with the Iron Man suit, going to be roasted. Where's Captain America? Okay? Captain America. The president's going to be killed. Captain America. Get him out there. Like, they couldn't even have a drop line. Like, maybe Robert Downey Jr. is like, hey, uh, where's Cap? You know, this is a Captain America type job. And they're like, uh, he's on another job. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to do it alone. But yeah, I kind of wish, like, oh, Thor uh, Thor was obviously on Asgard. He would have no business anyway. He's got Thor 2 happening. But Captain America, a little drop line where he is. Hulk, it's a surprise at the end, so at least they featured him. But Cap, where was he? Captain America, the president. You got Iron Patriot uh, just slamming up the, what are they? Terrorists, I'll just say that. Terrorists. Middle Eastern terrorists. Uh, the, the Ten Rings is what they're called. And it was kind of fun. Oh, crap. I kicked the tripod. I'm a... Yeah. It was kind of fun, but he, there should have been a little more, because it felt like a lot of him doing kung fu, which I like. It was interesting to see Don Cheadle kick butt, but at the same time, Iron Patriot or War Machine didn't do as much as I would have liked. In the review I said I did like him because I like what he did do, but I kind of do wish he did more. But speaking of Ten Rings, let's talk about the Mandarin. I didn't mind the twist. I'm not a comic book reader by any stretch of the imagination. I, I read very few. Like, I'll pick up one every couple 
years almost and just be like, yeah, I'll start reading them. And then like, I buy them one time and then a couple months later, yeah, I never did continue buying them. It's because it's too expensive, you know. Two dollars a month? Are you kidding me? I can't afford those prices. But the Mandarin, okay, the original comic book Mandarin was the Ben Kingsley thing where it's just him with the ten rings just sitting there all, all Osama Bin Laden like. I don't know about the voice though. He couldn't pull that off in the comics because there is no voices. But what you get is he is an actor. He's a guy that's just a drug addicted actor. Just like, they get you off drugs? No, they gave me more. And then he's the guy that's playing the Mandarin. It's just all a big performance piece. The real Mandarin is revealed to be Guy Pierce, who uh, has the extremist stuff, can throw fire and all that. Now what I understand is the new version of the Mandarin was basically that guy. I don't know, because there's the character Aldrich Killian from the extremist story who actually killed himself real early in that. But he he reveals that he is the Mandarin, but he's also Aldrich Killian. So I feel like they took the new Mandarin and fused it with the extremist story and just like, why not? Put it together. It didn't bother me now that I know. So you got one guy pretending to be like the old version of Mandarin, and then the new update version of the Mandarin is pretty much what Guy Pierce was. I think that's pretty smart, because the new Mandarin basically fused the Ten Rings to his spine and he can throw fire and all that from extremists or something like that. Sure, okay. The Mandarin didn't bother me. Some people pissed, but I think if you if you think about that for a minute, it's just one guy's pretending to be the old one, but the real one is more of the new version. I think it's fine. I think what upset people more is that they really built up that Ben Kingsley would possibly be awesome. Because there's these posters, and every trailer you just hear that you'll never see me coming. And you think he's going to be badass, but at the same time, yeah, there's the poster and stuff. He's featured very little in the trailers, besides those lines and just kind of seeing him. It's not like he saw him throwing fire or shooting at Robert Downey Jr. or something. So at the same time, they were subtly hinting to you, things might not be what they seem. That's just how I see it. So other people might see it differently, that's fine. But Guy Pierce, when he shows back up... Uh, yeah, he went from being a real freaky guy, I hated the performance of him being just obviously kind of weird, to the more suave, cool, almost like a Bruce Wayne type, or like someone who was trying to be a more charming version of Downey Jr., except less, like, horny. He's not hitting on Pepper Potts, but he's, like, very smooth and all charming and stuff, so, okay. I, I like that performance, and when he becomes the villain, he reveals he's the Mandarin. I liked it. He can throw a fire and breathe it. Cool. Uh... It's in the comics, so it doesn't bother me. In the movie, I was kind of thinking, eh, I don't know. But it was in the comics, sold. I'm okay with it now. And then you get the Iron Man battle at the end. You got all the 35 other suits that kind of get destroyed easy. But then again, Downing wasn't in them, so I don't know. Maybe that makes him easier to melt with your hot hands because there's no person inside it. Still a suit of armor. But maybe he manufactured them quickly because, I mean... Vietnamese kids have to make how many Nikes a day, they're not all going to be great. So Downey, maybe he made all those suits like really fast sweatshop conditions. Just get them out, get them out, get them out, get them made so I can move on. Maybe he's doing that, and that's why they're weaker. I don't know. I like seeing like the Hulkbuster Iron Man suit and all that. A lot of really cool suits. I like that. That end battle, awesome because like I said, the first two end battles, bad. The first one, not very good. Just kind of felt mediocre and didn't live up to the rest of the movie. Second one, movie wasn't that good, and the end battle was terrible. It sucked. This one, pretty good movie, great battle scene at the end. Got Pepper Potts eventually getting infused with the extremist stuff. She can kind of throw fire. She's more aggressive. She's kind of a BA. I like that. I think it's and the second one, she just felt all whiny and useless, so this one, at least she's kicking some butt. I'm okay with it. I don't think they should try and make her a badass now and just be like, Okay, Avengers 2, she'll show up and punch Loki in the face or something. You, you don't need to do that. <laughs> and I like it, but don't go too far here. And all the stuff with Downey out of the suit, you got Tony Stark just freaking almost MacGyvering it, where he's got a glove with, like, coils that works as a taser to zap people. And he's got some kind of little gun that knocked people out. I don't know remember exactly what it was but he's like breaking into the mandarin's lair and it was funny it was like seeing him be very resourceful without having the suit i thought it was fun i can't think of things that really bothered me i actually really enjoyed the movie if there's any other spoiler things i can't remember i i just can't okay i'll try to think of it right now is there anything else i'm forgetting hoo-ha motherfucker i remembered one that was al pacino i don't know why the end the end freaking end the heart surgery, that's the only thing that actually kind of bothers me now that I think about it. Second movie, he was it was actually killing him. The stuff was killing his heart. It was poisoning him. 
And then he just fixes it, so it's like, I'm not being poisoned anymore. Cool. And Avengers, kind of busy with the aliens, I get it. But in between Avengers and Iron Man 3, yeah, I get he's suffering from PTSD. But I think anywhere between the end of Iron Man 2 and Avengers, they could have tried to... There would have been a time for Downey to consider removing that. But, and just now they're like, we got big magnets, we're going to suck all the shrapnel out of your chest, remove the arc reactor, and then with the big hole there, I don't know. They fix it within five seconds. It's just a quick montage at the end. It's just, you see them removing it. Oh, well, I'm happy we spent time on that because it's not like I'm now going to do this heart surgery because the only thing I knew was I looked into it. The only person that could do the surgery, he found. He found the one doctor that could do it. They didn't get that across good enough because I had to look into it a little. But for the most part, I still really like the movie. Those things that bother me, you know, I'm okay with it. I can get over some minor things because, I mean, Dark Knight Rises. How did Batman get back to Gotham? Superman gave him a lift. They'll reveal that in the Justice League movie. Trust me on that. I'm just kidding, but I don't know. But the Iron Man thing, it just... It's not nearly as bad where, like, things are missing, like in The Amazing Spider-Man, where literally 40 minutes of things are missing from the movie, like 40 or 20 minutes, something like that, that would be integral to the movie. Like The Amazing Spider-Man, you put those scenes they cut out, put them back in, it's a really good movie. You take them out how they are now, it's a bad movie. Iron Man 3 is not that level, but I still, I, I do, I really enjoy the movie. I was just kind of nitpicking right now to, to discuss the spoilers, but that's pretty much all I can think about. So thanks for watching. Comment below, tell me what you thought of the movie, and uh, I don't know, talk about some. And I'll see you guys in a little bit when I review The Fast and the Furious. Because the Busta brought me home. That's a Vin Diesel line. I'll, I'll get to it. You'll see.